to be, who will they be? We'll find out later on this evening. And all of you all who are gathered here this evening, welcome to our second annual. You know, the first year is the inaugural. The second year is the annual and the tradition. And so we're very proud to be a part of the tradition here tonight. Welcome to the Honoring Veterans Banquet, where we'll recognize not only veterans, but also patriots, those who serve and serve those who served us. At this time, I'd like to introduce Bartholomew County's very first patriot, for the purpose of providing our invocation, Colonel Richard Yet. sure God hears what I have to say. <laughs> I know it's going to be inconvenient, but I would like for all of you to stand if you would. As all of you know, this is not just a, an isolated event to be at this banquet tonight. It's the first of many celebrations, ceremonies, etc. that we'll be having uh, over the weekend. And um, the gravity of it is that we see the clouds of war looming on the horizon. And uh, some of those who are veterans here tonight are veterans who are either on active duty or may be. And so I would like for us to pay solemn attention to this prayer. And if you would, please make it your prayer as well. Let us pray together. Most Sovereign Lord, and I choose that word carefully, you are our Sovereign. We are one nation under God. And because of that, Father, it is with resolve that we honor veterans tonight who have sought in past times to be obedient to you. For none of us cares for war. It is not the best way to resolve differences. And some of these have found out that it was the only way. And some may yet find that out as well. And so Father, we're praying for good fellowship happy discussion, a richness of heritage as we share this meal tonight. But we also do it with a prayer in our hearts and upon our lips and in our minds that you will indeed bless this nation for whom these veterans have served and will serve. We give our thanks to you for them. We honor them. And we praise you, even as we petition you for your grace to lay upon our nation, upon our leadership, upon our future, as a leader in a world free of war. May you bless us in all of these pursuits tonight, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 
Please remain standing for a moment if you would. It is not in your program, but I would like very much if you would to join with me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the point in the program where we say continue eating. We're going to continue on with the program. There's an army general who told his troops after planning a battle, onward to victory. And his soldiers, of course, obeying the command of their commander, headed off to the battlefield. But about uh, 48 hours later, came an urgent message from those soldiers. Give us uh, some directions. There's no victory on the map. So it is onward to victory in our program here this evening. Only Army veterans would appreciate that. <laughs> we are very proud to have with us some very special guests here this evening. Obviously, every person here is a special and honored guest, but some very special guests we would like to introduce to you. First of all, it is not a surprise and not by accident that our community is so supportive of veterans, though both those who are serving currently in active duty and those who are veterans of our armed forces. It's because we have such a strong community and strong community leadership. We're very proud to have with us here this evening the Honorable Fred L. Armstrong, Mayor of the City of Columbus, a veteran also. Please a nice round of applause for the mayor. And as program committee member Gordon Lake has reminded me over and over again, we also recognize the firefighters and the police of our community. And we're very proud and honored to have with us the Director of Public Works and Safety, Mr. Jim Norris. Jim, thank you for being here. During a recent interview, I had an opportunity to speak with this next gentleman, and he informed me, and we should be very proud of that, that Bartholomew County has the number one veteran service office in the state of Indiana. And that means that we're, we have a tremendous amount of people that are doing work for our veterans, and we should be extremely proud of that. And I know he's in the audience somewhere, Mr. Tom Jester, who is the Bartholomew County Veteran Service Officer. Tom, thank you for your commitment. With us this evening also, and he'll be introduced a little bit later, but uh, please a, a round of applause for our guest speaker this evening, Brigadier General Mark Killer. General Killer. And a couple of other individuals that I want to recognize that may not be on your program, but you all will recall and hear a little bit more about this project. Obviously, you heard about it and visited it during this past year. We're very proud to have with us people that really, really are committed to veterans. And it certainly showed during a recent exhibit we had in the city of Columbus. They brought the Visiting Vietnam Memorial Wall to our community, a great event. You'll hear more about that. The Myers Funeral Service are with us here this evening as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And where would we be without these next individuals? We're very proud to have you with us. You are with us at virtually every veterans event we have. Members of the 71st Special Ops Squadron with us this evening. Thank you so much for joining us as well. Now I say one of the best for last because they have actually formatted and developed this program for the past two years. And uh, although you have provided plenty of applause for those individuals we've introduced, I really would like to hear a wonderful round of applause for the organizing committee of the Honoring Veterans Bank, where they have done such a superior job the past two years in making this a great event, and it'll just grow and grow and grow. The organizing committee, if you would please stand to be recognized. We're very proud of the work that you've done here. <laughs> Now it is my distinct honor to introduce to you, for some welcoming remarks, the person who will represent your host here this evening, the 95ers and the volunteers for the Atterbury McCollar Air Museum. He provided me with a simple introduction. It simply says, the senior veteran of Bartholomew County, but he's much, much more than that. 
He's my friend, he certainly is a true patriot, and he's a United States Air Force retired general. But beside that, he is a great friend to the veteran and a great Columbus resident. Please, a great round of applause for retired general John Hall. Thank you, Wes. Whenever I'm asked to say a whole lot in a short period of time, I feel a great deal like an Egyptian mummy, sort of pressed for time. <laughs> On behalf of our chairman, Tom Vickers, and all of the 95ers, it's indeed my pleasure to welcome all of you to this Veterans Day Banquet 2002. And I want to take a moment to recognize the committee, but he's already done that for me, so that saves me some time. But I'll give you a little advice if you're wanting to do committees. You just pick out three qualified people, two males and one female, and you put the female in charge, <laughs> and there you go. Uh, I've been requested to report on the activities of the 95ers for the year, and this past year started with December 7th, 2001, when we redid the chapel bell in honor of Nathan Frederick, and his granddaughter was there, and we rung that bell a few times on the 60th anniversary of uh, Pearl Harbor. The museum in, opened in May and we had a revised floor plan and increased exhibits. And we want to test some increased hours, so on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we're 10 to 2 out there right now, along with the weekend hours of 10 to 4. Interestingly, we hosted 3,500 museum hours during this past year, the museum volunteers. On May 18th, Armed Forces Day, the 71st, rose to the occasion. We placed a historical marker on the People's Trail of the Collar Green in honor of the 71st and their combat duty in Vietnam. But I am going to ask them to stand. 71st, would you please stand? We've got Colonel Pyle, the commander, and Colonel High Thank you, gentlemen. Extremely well done. The Memorial Day programs, thanks to Harry McCauley, get better every year. They can become more meaningful and uh, significant. And Bob Garton will be with us on Monday to round out the rest of this weekend. The highlight of the year, already touched on by Wes, with a, without question was the Vietnam War. 30,000 people came to our city. 4,000 of them visited our museum. And of course, a special thanks go to Pat Myers, Ron Chadley, who is here this evening, and associates for a, well job, a job well done. And I think we ought to give them one more round of applause. Special thanks to Mayor Armstrong for his keynote address for that opening ceremony and his granddaughter Josie singing God Bless America. I enjoyed that. A quick look at 03. Museum opening is set for May. And on July 12th, I'm crossing channels here, the Columbus Aviation Board will have an Airport Appreciation Day. In mid-September, there are going to be two more historical markers placed on the McCollar Green. One, the 434th Troop Carrier Wing, and the other, really the number one marker, will be the landowners. Those farmers that 
owned the 2,000 acres of farmland that they had to give up to make our air base. The 434th, of course, trained at the base for a long time, 20 years, 49 through 69. 03 is going to close out recognizing a century of flight, which is the 100th anniversary of man flight, the Wright brothers starting out down in Carolina in 17 December 03. Joe Groove and, and Glenn have given us a lot of outstanding models, but currently hanging in the entryway of our museum is the Wright Flyer, uh, the bird that started the aircraft flying that are flying today. For closing thoughts, as we honor all of our living veterans with this banquet this evening, let us remember, let us not forget, the MIAs and POWs, and those veterans whose names are etched in stone on the columns of the Bethania County Memorial for Veterans. Let us also remember that they paid the supreme sacrifice for the freedom that's enjoyed throughout our world today. And finally, my last thoughts, I truly believe that patriotism is alive and well in Columbus, Indiana, Mr. Mayor. And the presence of all of you here this evening attests to that statement. So thank you and may God bless each and one of you for attending Honoring Veterans Program 2002. You know, we said at the outset of the program, it's not by accident that Columbus and Bartholomew County is a leader both in veteran services and veterans' rights and recognizing the veteran. And uh, truly tonight, we recognize the veteran and also, as uh, was Gordon Lake's dream, and we're seeing that through to fruition, also the recognition of those individuals who honor veterans because they're just as critical to the legacy of veterans and the legacy of what they've given to our community and to our nation. So we recognize you as well. But it's not by accident that all this transpires. It's through strong leadership, it's through recognition of what that contribution, what that dedication means. We're very honored to have as a leader of our community an individual who is not only a veteran of the United States Armed Forces, but a veteran of Homeland Security as well, a veteran of the Columbus Police Department. That makes him extra special when we recognize that we need to continue to identify the police and firefighters who are on the front lines now of Homeland Security and Defense. And to recognize their contributions, please join with me in welcoming the Honorable Fred L. Armstrong, Mayor of the City of Columbus. Thank you. And thanks to each and every one of you who took your time to show up tonight to honor our veterans. And uh, to the committee, I may become a little redundant here, but thank you. You did a wonderful job. Uh, it takes a lot to put something like this together. It's easy for us to show up and eat and enjoy ourselves, but to put something on like this, it, it uh, makes me feel good. Thank you very much. September the 11th, in the year 2001, none of us in this room will ever, ever forget. It was the day that we were attacked by terrorists in our country and our homeland. And our veterans, uh, some active here tonight, we want to thank you for what you do for us. But that day, our emergency service personnel, police, fire, and, and our EMS personnel in New York and actually throughout our country were on alert and continue to be on alert just as our military personnel. You will be seeing in the next few months in the city of Columbus more Homeland Security. We won't mention too much tonight, but you'll see some very active, very active participants in Homeland Security because this is where it happens. Not only for us who live in Columbus, Indiana, but for people who come and visit Columbus, we want to make sure that when you come to Columbus and you live in Columbus, you feel protected. 
So to our police officers and firefighters, Jim, public safety director, we all have a big job to do. And make sure, as we do our military personnel, when we see our police officers and firefighters, we take that extra time to say thank you. Shake their hands. Just be nice, because we're all in this together. Thank you very much for being here tonight. And to the veterans, thank you. And to our current active military personnel, thank you for the job you're doing and that you will do in the future for our country. Thank you. To introduce our very special guest speaker this evening, it gives me a great deal of pride to introduce a very close friend of mine, and certainly a working partner at White River Broadcasting as well. And I say that because he's also my boss, and I don't want to get fired. <laughs> Actually, he is a very near and dear friend, a veteran of the United States Air Force, but despite that fact, he's also a good friend. <laughs> he gets the last word, so, you know, get my digs in first. But seriously, I think you could look far and wide in the entire United States, and I think, well, I'll see a lot of kids nodding when I say this, you could look far and wide in the United States and never, ever find the kind of support for veterans that you'll find with WCSI Radio and White River Broadcasting. We're very proud to be able to be a partner with veterans and veterans organizations in this community. And no one holds that image in more high regard than the individual who will introduce our guest speaker. And I'm very proud to call him friend, co-worker, and certainly it's a blessing to call him a boss because there's not a better one in the world. The director of programming for White River Broadcasting, all the boards, stations that are in our family, and certainly a United States Air Force veteran, Mr. John Foster. After this evening, Wes asked if I would be uh, uh, willing to introduce our guest speaker since uh, he is Air Force and I'm Air Force too, and I said sure, but the real reason is Wes being Army knew that when we started talking Air Force terminology, a lot of multi-syllable words that he'd have trouble with. <laughs> so I said sure, I'll take care of that for you. Our special speaker tonight, Brigadier General Mark Piller, as I was looking through his information this evening, General, I'm amazed how our military careers are so closely entwined, and I'll share some of those with you. He is the current mobilization assistant to the Commander-in-Chief, the United States Strategic Command, responsible for the advising the Commander on the planning, coordination, and deployment of all Air Force Reserve resources. Now, the General began his Air Force career in 1971, which was about a year before I actually concluded my military career, and I think you all will attest to the fact that the transition was pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Almost seamless in some cases. General Piller uh, received his commission through the Reserve Officer Training Corps program. His first operational assignment was at Da Nang Air Force Base. Spent some of the tour of duty in Thailand and came back to the United States and started flying KC-135 refueling planes out of Grissom Air Force Base in our state. He was the vice commander of the 507th Air Refueling Wing at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma, also the vice commander of the 4th Air Force, uh, March Air Force Reserve Base in uh, California, and flew missions in support of Desert Shield and Desert Storm as well. The uh, general most recently served as the mobilization assistant to the commander of the 21st Air Force at McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey, which was one of the places I uh, was very tickled to see because that's where I outprocessed after spending a year in Greenland. So I was real tickled to be at McGuire, and I'm glad you kept it open for me long ago, General. <laughs> General Piller earned a Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Edwardsville. He attended Squadron Officer School and Air Command and Staff College at Maxwell Air Force Base. And I served for a couple of years down the road at Craig Air Force Base, which was an Air Training Command uh, base for a number of years. Also, uh, General Piller was, uh, served in uh, at Minot Air Force Base. I'm going to talk winters, ask him about those. Uh, Newport Naval Education and Training Center in Newport, Rhode Island, the War College back at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. He's a command pilot with more than 5,300 hours in the EC-47, the KC-135, the, KC the KC-135E, and the KC-135R. Wes, I'll explain all those later. <laughs> Would you please join me in welcoming our special speaker for tonight, Brigadier General Mark Pillar.
I'm always amazed that uh, I sound a, a lot better on paper than I am in person. <laughs> Uh, I made the mistake of uh, mentioning at, uh, at my table that uh, I've been at military events where uh, we throw rolls at each other, we dip them in wine and, and throw rolls at the speaker. So I asked that all the rolls would be uh, removed before I make my remarks. <laughs> uh, General Hoff, uh, Sergeant, sorry, uh, Mayor Armstrong, <laughs> Colonel Pyle. Honored veterans, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored to be tonight's speaker at Columbus's second annual Honoring Veterans Banquet. As I was preparing my remarks, my son, who just got home from college, reminded me of a history paper he wrote in high school. The gist of it was, Julius Caesar was a great general. Julius Caesar gave long speeches. They killed him. <laughs> Tonight I'll try to learn from history. Because of the ongoing world, worldwide war against terrorists, this Veterans Day will be different from previous years. The events since the attack on our nation and on the world itself gave rise to a fresh appreciation for those in uniform. Since September 2001, Americans, young and old alike, have instinctively turned to our military as a symbolic yet also very real source of national strength. But sometimes, even in times of national crisis, we overlook the sacrifices of those who came before us. I'd like to begin tonight's remarks with a true story about a captain from Fort Belvoir, Virginia, an army post. <laughs> the captain was approaching the med medical facility when she noticed a veteran walking toward her. The old soldier, stooped over and walking very slowly, appeared to be about 80 years old. The captain barely gave the veteran a second glance because coming up immediately behind him was a full colonel. When it was time to render her salute to the colonel, the old veteran was only a few paces from the captain. Good morning, sir, the captain said, saluting sharply. The veteran immediately came to life, totally transformed by the captain's greeting. Thinking the salute was intended for him, the veteran straightened up, returned her salute, and exclaimed with vigor, Good morning, captain. Meanwhile, the colonel was in the process of returning her salute when he realized what was going on. The colonel stopped in mid-salute, remained silent, exchanged glances with the captain, and continued on his way, unobserved by the veteran. This story illustrates the importance of Veterans Day, when a nation pauses to salute all those who have served and those who continue to serve our great nation in uniform. It honors those who have served on active, reserve, and guard duty, and those who served during times of peace and times of war. This day honors those who served two years and those who made it a career. As we see in the story of the old veteran, even a small amount of recognition can go a long way. I hope that most Americans think about the importance of our nation's military and its veterans more than just on one day in November. But even that one day remains a great, means a great deal to those who have worn and continue to wear the uniform. 200 years ago, Thomas Paine encouraged American revolutionaries when they struggled and fought for freedom. He said, tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. His sentiments resonate today as we commemorate the legions of men and women who have protected our nation. I stood up and stared and never said a word. 
Today is our time for a moment of silence to reflect about America's veterans who, like that young private, have given so much to our nation. Through their sacrifice, dedication, and courage, they have given us a most precious gift, the continued freedom and opportunity to live in a land unique among any others. Today is our time for a moment of silence to honor the men and women who died defending our freedom and to thank those who served with valor and live. And today is our time for a moment of silence to recognize the men and women who continue to serve in America's armed forces today around the world. Men and women who are standing watch on foreign soil, bringing food and medical supplies to people in distress, serving as peacekeepers in strife-filled areas of the world, or fighting our growth our war on terrorism. They're alert, they're vigilant, and they're prepared. Their service, courage, and sacrifice is typical of America's mettle and resolve. Throughout the course of American history, courageous men and women have taken up arms to secure, defend, and maintain the core principles upon which our nation's freedoms depend. September 11, 2001, terrorists ruthlessly attacked our land and these freedoms. The terrorists' deluded attempt to assail our spirit failed, and our nation's response reveals that the spirit of freedom is as strong as ever. Our troops are now fighting overseas to defeat terrorism, and in that effort, they follow in the footsteps of the 48 million men and women who since our nation's founding have stepped forward to defend our land. Today there are more than 25 million living veterans who have served our nation in times of peace and war. Many of them willingly entered harm's way to fight for our freedoms. These veterans have diverse religious beliefs and come from varying backgrounds and ethnic ethnicities. <laughs> By their service, they kept America strong and they have protected our way of life from tyranny's grip for nearly two, for over two centuries. At this moment, men and women of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard are serving around the world. They represent our resolve, dedication, excuse me, our resolute dedication to achieving lasting peace out of the new challenges and threats of the 21st century. Former Secretary of Defense William Perry said a decade ago that the enemies of peace and freedom thought that democracies would not or could not fight to deter or defeat tyranny and aggression. They were wrong more than 50 years ago. They were wrong during the Cold War. And they are wrong today. His words still ran true. His observation that enemies of peace and freedom underestimate the men and women of this great nation continue to echo as we are engaged in our fright and our fight against terrorism. If history has taught us anything, it is that Americans will bear any hardship, overcome any obstacle, and conquer any foe in their pursuit of liberty and justice for themselves, their children, their countrymen, and for those whose faces they'll never see. On Veterans Day, let us pause to reflect on the sacrifices of those who have put on the uniform to serve the United States military. Let us honor our veterans who proved their heroism and love of country time and again, from Yorktown and Gettysburg to Iwo Jima 
in the Persian Gulf. They constantly defended our ideals across the globe, and they continue to inspire those who defend America Day today halfway around the world. More than one million have died in service to America, and more than a million and a half have been wounded. Some sustained serious injuries in combat and now live with disabilities. Our nation will always be grateful for those noble sacrifices made by these veterans. We can never adequately repay them, but we can honor and respect them for their service. To all of you assembled here tonight who have worn the nation's uniform, the American public must never forget the service you have rendered. There are no words adequate enough to express what your devotion and sacrifice has meant to our nation. Your efforts built the foundation of the world's greatest military. We are blessed in this community, and, and I have to say this, that none of us talk to each other about our remarks tonight, but they're all very much the same when I get to this part. We are blessed in this community that we have veterans and patriots who are willing to continue their service to their community and their country. People who ensure that our veterans are not forgotten by organizing events such as this, Monday ceremonies, the traveling Vietnam Memorial Wall, and other ceremonies throughout the year. And it's people who make these things happen. People like Wes Roy, Harry McCauley, John Foster, and Colonel Richard Yetton, last year's recipients of our Patriot Award. Kathy Duffer, Gordon Lake, and ubiquitous Harry McCauley, who made this event happen. Tom Vickers, Major General Hoff, Wendell Ross, and the other 95ers. Ron Shanley and his committee, who brought the wall here to Columbus. The great volunteers at the Atterbury Bacallar Air Museum. And finally, the leadership of the disabled veterans, the VFW, the American Legion, the Air Force Association, the Reserve Officers Association, the National Guard Association, the veterans Vietnam Veterans Association, the Marine Corps Association, and all the others who make these events occur. Through their perseverance, our community remains focused. Now, like the young private serving more than 80 years ago, let us find time for our moment of silence, to stand silent and be thankful for peace. Thankful for this great nation of ours. Thankful for the veterans of our armed forces. Thankful for the one million Americans who have died to preserve our liberties and our personal freedoms. And thankful for the people in our armed forces who serve America today to keep it safe for tomorrow. The quiet heroes who sustain this great nation. To each of you, our military men and women that we honor today, whose dedication and loyalty are the strength of our military and exemplify the spirit, courage, and patriotism that have made and continue to make America great. I proudly salute you. May God bless our great veterans and may God bless the United States of America.
And uh, there are times that we go through postpartum depression, and uh, maybe one of those times. <laughs> As each of you know, there are tremendous, you look around you, tremendous amounts of veterans in our community who have done so much service and provided so much and dedicated their lives. But there are those who you cannot see. There are those who are in hospitals, in nursing homes, and oftentimes not remembered at ceremonies such as these. And earlier this evening, I had a chance to strike up a conversation with Jim Griffin. Uh, Jim, I know you're here in the audience. Thank you. Um, and what we were at White River Broadcasting, we're trying to consider something we could do for those veterans. Those veterans who are in hospitals during these holidays and those veterans who are quietly continuing their, their dedication and spirit in nursing homes and other places. And Jim had reminded me that the American Legion has a program where they go to the hospitals and they present gifts and care packages and, and, and that type of thing. And tonight we're announcing to you that White River Broadcasting is tying in along with the Veteran Service Office and the American Legion. You'll be hearing more about this. And a program we're going to call Thanks for Giving. And we'll be meeting in hospitals with those veterans and we'll be supporting those efforts because we cannot forget, even though they may be ill or even though they may be along in years, that they are just as dedicated today as they were that day, and we should be dedicated to their legacy as well. We hope that you'll be joined with us in that program. Thanks for giving. A part of White River Broadcasting, the American Legion, thank you, Jim Griffin, Tom Jester also, the, certainly with the uh, Veterans Service Office here in Bartholomew County. <laughs> the Patriot. A proud American for whom freedom is more than just a word. A humble person for whom honor is that bestowed upon those who serve so that others might live in freedom. A selfless individual for whom duty is a pledge to ensure that none of us ever, ever forgets. Ladies and gentlemen, join with me in welcoming to the podium now the Veterans Service Organization known as the Patriots Committee who will be honoring those Patriots for 2002, Gordon Lake, Harry McCauley, and Kathy Bell. Well, let me get one thing out of the way right off the bat. <laughs> John, I think you mentioned uh, earlier that the key to success of any committee was to have a woman on it <laughs> and let her run things. And I can safely say, especially from my perspective, that our woman has more than run, run things. She has managed them. She has manipulated them. <laughs> she has achieved them. She has done far more than can be expected of any one person. And I think that we're here tonight, we're enjoying everything because of so much of what this one woman did. And I think we need to recognize Kathy Tucker. Kathy, thank you. <laughs> Gordon and I literally were on for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wes kind of summed up what the Patriot award is about. And I can't add anything to his words except to get on with the program and to announce the recipients of this year's award. Uh, one, one of my duties is, uh, other than writing for the newspaper, is a Bargalby County historian. So I like to think in terms of history, of, of dates, uh, uh, events, and, and, and relate what's happening today to what happened in the past. Uh, and it was exactly one year ago, well, no, it'll be uh, one day short of a year ago, that a gentleman came before us out at the uh, National Guard Army last year and had a little announcement on to make. He said the Vietnam Wall was coming to Columbus. Now, I don't know if you well, I know in this group that you can understand this, but what that means to so many, 
especially those who, who want to be uh, uh, In making that announcement, this gentleman somehow or other uh, established a link with literally thousands of young men and women who went through Vietnam, who went through the emotions of Vietnam, who lost so many people in Vietnam. Anyone here who has been to the Vietnam Wall in Washington understands it. To be able to look at those names, to touch them, to feel communion with them, it is indescribable. There have been efforts before to bring this traveling exhibit to Columbus, and it's not an easy task for me. This gentleman and his organization did it. Now, having done it, and without his organization, it would have been impossible, obviously. Thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars were spent. But the things you didn't see were the thousands and hundreds of hours that this one individual spent preparing. You know, it, I, I talk in terms of, he made this announcement a year ago. Planning began long before that. And boy, when he made the announcement, planning really took off. And he maintained his day job at the same time. I would, I would watch him as he worked. And, and, and so many of these things that he did that, that you didn't see. And then the week came when, when, when the wall was actually here. I don't, I don't think he got any sleep. In fact, that having talked to him during this period, he babbled a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there were times when he, he literally didn't make any sense at all. But he didn't need to. The wall spoke for itself. I don't think, you know, <clears throat> as uh, someone who experienced the wall, that there are words that you can you can find to describe it. I think the community owes this man and his organization so very, very much for giving us the opportunity to experience it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald W. Shanley Jr. Come on, come forward. And 
anyone in this audience, and gosh, I hope there isn't, who hasn't been out to that museum and hasn't seen you know, what it has to offer, I sure miss it so much. But that, too, you know, established a link with the veterans of this community and, and the people that they represented, the people that they served. It brought alive and brought back so much of the military history and this community's connection to it. The glider pilots, the Tuskegee Airmen, so many, many things. There have been so a lot of people who, who were involved with the opening of the uh, museum. And, and a lot of people, these same people, uh, have been involved with a number of the other programs that I want to mention a little bit. But there are three people who I think embody this particular group we're talking about. The group is called the 95ers. When you look at, at what is today Columbus Municipal Airport, you know that a lot of communities have taken military installations and, and used them for their own purpose and forgotten, you know, what happened. In fact, you can go to some places where there were military installations and, and you would you would recognize it. That's not so weird. Let me, let me just read you a few of the things that have taken place over the past 10 or so years. We'll call it green. The Fred Meyer Plaza. The Lieutenant John McCuller Memorial. The museum. The historical markers. Now, right now there are three of them. They honor the Tuskegee Airmen, the Glider Pilots, the 71st Special Operations Squadron. There's going to be more. This group doesn't, doesn't stop. But we now have a permanent reminder of these people and the unique mission that they provided. We have one of the few chapels uh, that dozens of these guys uh, spent hundreds, perhaps thousands of hours in their own time turning into the beautiful facility that it is, the King of Law and Norbert Chapel. And there's so much, you know, that, that, that name alone. These people were so considerate of the community's history that they chose ways to, to make a connection. King Law and Norbeck was the only woman from Adelman County killed uh, on service. From the phone. The chapel was in her. They, they did other things besides facilities. The Celebration 95 Parade. Who could forget the Celebration 95 Parade? Uh, one of the biggest parades in the history of Columbus. I happened to be involved with the planning for the Montgomery County Memorial for Veterans, and uh, we were looking for ways to establish a connection with the community to raise money. And it was a, a no-brainer. We turned to the 95ers, and they just ran with the ball. Over $800,000, not a penny in tax dollars was spent all the ways within this community. Rich people, poor people, and hundreds of donations. Amazing. I don't think I need to say any more. There are many people in the 95ers, but I think that these three individuals are the guts of the Tom Walk, Tom Vickers, Wendell Ross, General John Hoff. Please come forward.
hard to be uh, a loss for words because really there were so many of us that were called 95ers. There was so much to be done over such a long period of time that the three of us just happened to be there to listen to these people as they came every week saying, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we did it. It all pulled in the same direction. This is those veterans that we're honoring here tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all named as patriots this evening. Certainly everyone here is a patriot in their own right. At this time, we'd like to ask for John and uh, Dick Yetton to join us up here at the podium, and certainly all of our patriots as well. If you were at Southside Elementary School yesterday, if you were not, you missed, her, uh, you missed a tremendous, a tremendous tribute to veterans and to patriotism as the kids uh, provided a program to salute veterans. You missed them singing a special song that I know the mayor had mentioned this brought a tear to his eye and you weren't human if you didn't have a tear in your eye as they sang God Bless America in salute to patriotism and in salute to veterans. So we'd ask that all patriots please come up here, those that were named tonight and certainly those who uh, were also named last year and help us in leading this crowd this evening in God Bless America. Please stand with us in saluting America. In case you don't know the words, it's on the back of your program. <laughs> God bless America. Challenged. 
But if you hadn't had an opportunity to sign on to what probably is one of the longest website names in the country, you, know, you should avail yourself of it. It, it, it is fantastic. And this is all possible because of one man. God, we have met prisoners of war, World War II veterans, Korean veterans, Vietnam veterans, Desert Storm veterans. What do we call the next? Father, if nothing else, you have helped us to gain an appreciation of the contribution of these men. We have been in the presence of men of caliber, men of righteousness, men of valor. Father, this certainly counts for something as we bring this service to a close. If we can begin to appreciate the confidence that we all have in our armed forces of today. Pray, O oh God, that you would help us to do what is right. That you would want to be your will, even as you have with these before us. We thank you for this program. We lift up before you these who have been honored tonight. Pray for your grace and mercy and one life to abide with them. Send us to our homes. Strengthen in the cause that we serve, the cause of freedom, and justice, and righteousness. In the name of the Almighty God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of His Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.